Welcome back. We're here with Chef Bruno. Chef, what is on the menu today? We're going to have some veal scallopini with the lemon cabernet sauce. And it's also called the veal piccata. Piccata. What is the um, difference with scallopini and no, piccata? No, it's the same thing. Basically, in the USA, they call it veal piccata. And usually when you say that, it means it's uh, the lemon caper and butter sauce that okay. goes with it. All right. So obviously we start with veal. Tell me what I need to know about veal. Okay. Here we have uh, three slices of beautiful pink veal. Uh, what do I look for at the store when I'm buying this veal? This color. Okay. You need a nice and pink. You don't want any blood. All right. You don't want it brown either. So okay. this comes from uh, the top round of the veal which is uh, this part here, okay. the very top. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Thanks for doing that to and you so and not to me. Yeah. <laughs> basically, it's a calf. Okay. okay. So it's not an overgrown animal. That's why there is no blood. All right. And, uh, and this is a, a type of uh, called Provimi veal, which is basically they still uh, been sucking milk, basically. All right. So that's why the color is so nice. And it's very, very tender. But to be does able it come this thin? No, do it doesn't that. come this thin. It comes in a big piece like that, but you can buy this probably already sliced. Mm -hmm. I actually did the work, so basically this is all being pounded. Okay. And uh, to a certain uh, consistency, you don't want it too paper thin or too thick. So it doesn't because tear. the thicker they are, the tougher it's going to taste. Mm -hmm. So, and if they are too thin, they don't look good. All right. Way. So basically, this is the rice consistency you want about, you know, no more thinner than this okay. or thicker than that. Great. And it's a very quick, um, lean dish to cook, mm -hmm. very easy. Okay. And uh, basically, uh, the ingredients that we're going to have for this dish All right. is uh, very, very simple. We have uh, some lemon juice that we're going to use for that, of course, salt and pepper always, flour, the flour we need is for dusting the scallopini and the capers. These little things, not many people know what capers are. Right. What are, what are capers? Bas basically, crepe, capers are a bush. It's a, it can be a wild bush. It can grow on walls. usually grows in, in the southern part of Italy, mm -hmm. especially in Sicily or around all the Sicilian islands. You can walk around and basically have the bushes of uh, capers coming out from the wall. Okay. All right. These are co called capote, C-A-P-O-T-E, -E, are the biggest capers you can find around here. Now, another thing about capers, which is important, this is a, those ones, uh, they're kind of under vinegar. All right. Uh, so it's advisable to wash it a little bit. So get, get you know, rid of that taste, very heavy taste uh, of vinegar. Uh, these are a lot, they're very a lot salty. larger than the ones at the store in that jar. They're very a little salty. Mm -hmm. You want to taste one? I don't know. Do I? Yes, I think you should. So it's a particular <laughs> flavor. You either hate it or like it. I like it. It's I a little like salty. It. Yeah. No. You don't put, yeah, that's what I said. Now, another form you can find the capers is under sea salt. Mm -hmm. So that means they've been dried under sea salt. In that case, you need to wash them very, very well for a little while, so get rid of the saltiness. All right. So you can actually taste the caper. So that's good. I have that's to about say. capers. That's good. Uh, we're going to have a little um, minced garlic, but that's not actually for the scallopini, but we're going to use that for the fresh spinach that we're going to go with the, with the mm -hmm. dish. OK. Uh, we also have uh, some uh, brown stock or veal stock. And that's for flavor that? the sauce. Well, this is a, it's a very long process. You need to uh, basically roast the veal bones with a bunch of vegetables, onions, carrots, and stuff like that for a very long time. And then you put water and you reduce it for hours, and then you have to filter it. And then after that, you need to thick it up again and reduce it. That's why it's called demi-glaze. Mm -hmm. Demi-glaze. And, and obviously, I'm not going to do all those things at my home. What would I do in its place to have something similar I don't think you, you should do that because good. you don't have the time to do that. No. <laughs> so you can buy this in powder form. Powder, and, uh, okay. Yeah, powder form. And there are some very good products around. And basically, you mix it with a bit of hot water. All right. And you thicken it up to your, your consistency. And it's actually, you can buy some good stuff around, mm -hmm. which is pretty tasty. Okay. It cuts down all the work. 
and uh, of course we're going to have uh, some white wine here to go with the sauce, mm -hmm. the lemon juice, the usual extra virgin olive oil for sautéing, and then we're going to finish the sauce at the very end with some butter. Okay, and you important. mentioned uh, the olive oil, the extra virgin is important. Yeah, again, uh, in Italy we have uh, several types of olive oil with several types of acidity. So you can start from the near, very north where Lake Garda is. So they're on the lake, even if it's a very northern climate, it's still they can actually grow olive trees. But, and also on the Ligurian coast, we have olive trees and olive oil, then you go all, all around the islands. Basically all over Italy, you can okay. grow olive oil. And they all taste more or less strong, a um, little tangy, um, and with a different kind of uh, acidity. Okay. So it's your own preference, really, about olive oil. I like the one from the south because it's very kind of strong and robust, and you know, actually looks like a dark, Great. dark olive. Okay, let's get this spiel started. Sure. So, let's do. Hey, Ron, can you please get me some butter, butter and the white wine? Thanks. So we're gonna heat our pan again at the beginning with a little high flame. Then we can always reduce it. Okay. And uh, we wine start. That. Yeah, we start with the got a white wine. Oh yeah, thanks. And uh, basically, again, make this a little hot. Not too hot. But. So take the scallopine and you dust them, coat them in flour. One by one, and make sure you dust the flour. You don't want too much flour in there, because it's going to burn. And would send me to dip in an egg first or milk first, no, but well, not no. this. Just in this flour. case, you don't need it, just flour. But it's important to dust it off pretty well, so the flour doesn't get burned when you're cooking it with the oil. These are about uh, kind of two ounces each. All right. So you don't need more than six ounces. So let's wait for this oil to get nice and hot. It's important the oil is hot, so when you put a scallop in in there, it's going to kind of sear it a little bit. Right. Perfect temperature. Yeah. Well, I don't look at temperature. <laughs> like I just look at the, the oil and I know when it's ready. See that? Mm -hmm. It's not too hot. Sprinkle a little salt, not too much. Always little. You can always add more later. But can take it out. Are you a sea salt person or just yeah, regular salt? Sea salt. Okay. Yeah. So while they're here, you can kind of turn them around a little bit. So they get nicely coated. And you do that for a few minutes. Fairly quick meal to prepare. Yeah, it's a very quick meal. Once you have them pounded. It's, it's very important to regulate your flame when you do this. Don't overdo it. You can always look under to see how they're doing. See, so you'll notice they start shrinking a little bit, but that's normal. At this point, you can turn them around. Okay. And again, see, they're still a little pinky. Feel a no pink type. No pink. To finish. You want them cooked all the way, yeah. And you can see that the pink is still coming out from mm -hmm. there. The pink juice. It all depends. on the, This is a little thicker part than that. See, at this point, uh, I'll take them out because I don't want to overcook them. Okay. So they can rest here for a little while. Perfect. Yeah, and then basically 
We can put them back into the sauce later on. Okay. Or they finish this the sauce. This is a perfect spot for us to stop and take a break. Sure. Come back for the next step in just a minute. We'll let these rest. Yeah. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna keep this up so that it won't turn. Welcome back with Chef Bruno. What's next with our veal? Oh, next is we're gonna drop the capers. I just throw them a little bit. Yeah, and then you put that uh, white wine. Mm -hmm. Put a mound of white wine and then you're gonna reduce the flame. You're gonna scrape all this little Juicy Everything bits good. here. Everything yeah. Good on the bottom of the yeah, you need to scrape it off. Sorry about the noise. Okay. In the meanwhile, we can drop some oil in there for the spinach. So we get our spinach wilted on a low flame. Low as possible. And we can see that a large amount of spinach. Yeah, they will become the nothing. By the time I cook this, you won't even see them. And of course, I like to sprinkle always a little bit of salt and pepper in this. And the garlic at the end? Yeah, the garlic at the very end because I don't want to burn the garlic. Or towards the end, so you can. Uh, Taste the freshness, and basically, these are going to be done very, very quick. You need to toss them around now and then. Mm -hmm. Again, kind of low flame because they're, they're very thin. When we go back to this, we're going to add a little bit of uh, the stock. And then it depends again how much sauce you want. Right. You can always add more stuff. It's already thickening it up. More. It's already line. thickening it up. Mm -hmm. We go back, put back the scallopin in there. So. Kind of let it smooth with the sauce, blend it all together. It smells delicious. And uh, this stage we can finish a bit with the butter and a very, very low flame. The reason why I put the butter at the very end is because uh, if you put it at the beginning, mm -hmm. some people like to cook the butter at the beginning, but I don't because the butter is going to burn. Right. This way you can leave it like that and basically it will melt on its own very gently. And that's what you need. Now we Fantastic. go back to here. Now we can add our little garlic. Like that. Make sure we mix it properly. So to cook at home, I need plenty of butter, plenty of garlic, and plenty of yeah. olive oil. Yeah. Once uh, the spinach starts becoming dark green, basically they're ready. Right. Imagine how much you have to start with at the restaurant. Well, I mean, as much as it is all the time. Okay, see the spinach are nice and wilted now. So, probably switch off on the flame. Perfect. And this is done. The rest, this is almost ready. See the butter is melting beautifully. All we need to do is add some, uh, some chopped parsley in this sauce. So you can see the, the batter's disappeared. Right. Nice emulsified, you got beautiful thick sauce now. That's delicious. And we can switch on the flame again also. And this is all done. Lemon? Lemon? No, I already put the lemon in there. Oh, okay. We need to put bitter here. Okay. 
Not too much. Just a skosh? That was my mother's word, a skosh. I don't know how much that is. And we can put also a little there. I don't put much lemon because it can be overpowering. Mm -hmm. So, and there you go. So we can probably plate on plate? start plating it. Like that. So I will take a plate. And the spinach. Try to squeeze them a little bit. Put it right in the middle of the plate. This too is on your menu at the restaurant? Yeah, this is also on the, on the meat section. Scalopine, or piccatine, whatever you want to call them, piccata. I think I'm going to call it delicious. A little that. Okay, the scalopine, put it on one side like that. Down in here. I love the perfection, yeah. perfection of placement. And then you can kind of scoop your sauce around it, over the scallopini, all around the side. And there you go. The camera crew is going to devour so, this. And I'm going to looks delicious. Clean the plate. Beautiful. The dish is done. Beautiful. Scallopine, lemon, pepper, and butter sauce. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. That looks fantastic. We're going to take another short break, okay. come back, and then you know what? Now you're going to eat it. I can eat it. We'll be right back.